Hey everyone, this is Drew Wilson. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and set up FireRift on your server. Before you purchase FireRift, you'll need to run the FireRift server test. You can download it by going to this features page here on FireRift.com and scrolling to the bottom. You'll see the link here, download the server compatibility test. Go ahead and click that and it will download to your desktop. You can then upload it to your server to run the test. So once you've downloaded the FireRift server compatibility test, you can go ahead and upload it to your server. Make sure you put it in your public root directory and then go ahead and change the permissions to be 777. Once you've done that, you can go back to the web and pull up the page. And right here you'll see some instructions. We've already done this step. So go ahead and fill in your database information. You just need a username and a password for one of your databases. Then go ahead and hit Run Test. And you'll see that I pass all the different tests required for FireRift. And it tells me that I'm ready to use FireRift. After you purchase FireRift, you can go ahead and upload it to your server to get started on the installer. So I'll go ahead and open up this subfolder here that I created to put FireRift into. As you can see, it's blank, and I'll go ahead and add in all of the FireRift files. Once it is finished uploading, there are a few steps to follow to ensure the FireRift installer has enough access and privileges to change certain files and directories. You also want to make sure that this htaccess file uploaded because it is an invisible file, so you just want to make sure that it's up there. But first, what we got to do is we have to change some permissions on some of these folders. So the feed, public, and upload folder, you'll want to change the permissions to be 777. Then we'll go into the system folder and into the applications, into the config, and we'll select three files. We'll select the config, database, and fr config, and we'll change those three files to have permissions of 777. Then we'll go back up to the applications, go into the extensions, geotag, public, JS, and then we'll change this maps API to have 777 set as its privileges. And then you can go back out here to your folder. And because I installed FireRift into a subdirectory, from my root, which is this one. I have to make that uh, accessible in the htaccess file. So we'll open up the htaccess file and I have to tell it where it is located. It's located in the fire directory. So we'll hit save. If you were to upload fire into your root HT, uh, htdocs or public html folder, you don't need to do this step. This is only if you put it into a subdirectory. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and run the installer. So we'll go back to Safari, and we will go to the directory where I have this set up. So we'll go to fire slash install, and you'll be greeted with the installer page. And then you can go ahead and uh, fill out this three-step form, and you'll be ready to install FireRift. So first, let's fill in the website title, which is the name of the website I'm installing this for, which is full size. Then we'll do the website URL, which on the purchase page, if you sign up for a license for adfullsize.com, this will cover any subdirectory or subdomain on this domain, add full size. And in this case, you want to make sure that you type in uh, the URL of where you're installing this. So in this case, I'm installing this here at adfullsize.com slash fire. So I want to make sure that I add in the slash fire here. And then this is whether or not you want to install the template. I do want to install the template, so I'll make sure that's checked on. And then you can fill in your license key and hit next. Now it's time to set up your database. So go ahead and fill out your database information that you're going to be using with FireRift. There's also a database table prefix. And what that is is if you only have one database or you'd like to install FireRift onto an existing database that already has other tables in it, but you don't want them to conflict, 
you can go ahead and give a prefix to all the tables that Firelift will create. So all the tables that Firelift creates will be prefixed with whatever you put in here. So we'll go ahead and remove that since I don't need it and we'll click next. Now you're going to set up your user. This is going to be the admin user that you are setting up Firelift with. So go ahead and just fill out your information here. Once you've completed that, go ahead and click next and you'll see a big install now button. Just go ahead and click that. And we're done. We've installed Firelift. The template site data you'll see is all here, pre-installed for us. Everything's here. If we go to the galleries, we can check out the images that were pre-installed for us in the video. And you can also go to the public website now and see that the template site has installed and everything's here and ready to go. Now there's one last thing you want to make sure you do when you're done installing Firelift, and that is to switch the public directory um, for the Firelift install that you just installed. We changed that to 777. You'll want to make sure you change it back to 755 for security reasons. Firelift does attempt to do this when you install, but with certain uh, server configurations, it cannot do it. So it's just a good idea to double check and make sure that it's set back to 755. You'll also want to make sure you delete your install directory from your server so nobody else can get in there and harm your system. So once you do that, you are done installing Firefox and you're ready to use it. So thanks for watching and enjoy.